why did you choose architecture and, and infra infrastructure as your source material? I grew up in a, in a family that was involved in the construction trades. Um, so I kind of saw the world through that lens. But being a girl, it was never encouraged or even noticed much, even by me, that it, that it interested me. It was just part of growing up, um, living in New York. And, um, but through my art, I began to realize that it did interest me. It was first an interest in um, archaeology, which I studied in college. And um, so the, 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 the ruins of older cultures interested me. And I started to think about why. And eventually, why was that relevant in a contemporary sense? And it just all of a sudden became obvious that it's all around us. Mm -hmm. And that, that was really what was interesting me all along. So from there, you continued on to deal with structure yes. and so on. Yes, and yeah. well, particularly things that are on their way up or on their way down. <laughs> not, things, not, not really things that are just structures. And Anne, what brought you to dealing with architecture and infrastructure? Well, first of all, I grew up in New York City. And um, in my paintings, what I do is I put together images that from my own photographs. And mm -hmm. I'm trying to find the relationships between them. So the real work takes place in the transition from one to the next. Mm -hmm. And construction sites are actually, of course, a place of transition. Right. Um, so I think that incomplete structures uh, I have a natural affinity for because they're they're not really anything yet. <laughs> Each of you actually has a very distinct visual voice and a very distinct style. What is your relationship to each other's work when you're putting this exhibition together? What's your relationship to each other's work? Uh, and has exhibiting together actually influenced each other's work? So Anne, this time we'll start. Um, well, you know, when we first met, we were put together by a curator who um, had seen both of our work, but in fact we didn't know each other. And when we started to put the show together, we found all these amazing coincidences because of course we had this whole body of work that existed and we saw that we had photographed some of the same things, we used some of the same colors, there were all kinds of structures that were common to both of us, so that seemed like a, a kind of a wild coincidence, almost freaky. Um, just, you know, there are a lot of people who grew up in New York City who don't photograph those specific things. Um, but since we've met, we've become very conscious of mm -hmm. these relationships. Um, so for example, there was a painting that Corp put in our previous show. There's actually three separate paintings in horizontal strips, and she hung them together. So I got this idea of stacking. And I, t I took that idea of horizontal bands of things that are just stacked up on top of each other. Um, so that idea very much came from having seen Cora's work stacked that way. You know, artists are always influenced by everything they see, and one of the things that we see in the last six months is each other's work. And this even extended to, I started really walking around with my camera, as I do, and, I, and photographing, but I photographed something I thought would be good for Cora to paint. Which <laughs> I did. And she did. <laughs> and actually, it, it, it found its way into that painting that is stacked. It's actually six separate panels, and each panel is representative of a different um, scene of an open floor under construction. And they're all from completely different places. Um, but one of them is, is actually the subtitle of it that is in my mind is From Anne. <laughs> that, was, that was one of the photographs she sent to me and you could figure out which one it was. <laughs> and then the other part of that story is that uh, last summer I was at the lower end of the High Line looking at the, um, the new Whitney under construction and um, I think you were in Alaska. Um, I was. I, so I texted her saying, you have to come and photograph this. <laughs> um, and I did, and I've done one painting based on that subject, which is a little one around the corner here. 
but um, when she got back from Alaska, she photographed it, and there are actually two paintings. You want to point out which two were from that? Yes, it's, uh, this is that's Whitney under construction. One is that multiple uh, panel piece, um, and this is Whitney under construction. Two is this black one with the yellow band, and they're both of the same scene and pretty much the same scene as Anne's painting. Yeah. Uh, and we, we resolved not to look at each other's paintings until we got here. Yeah. I work for my own photographs, which are um, digital. And I do studies of individual images. The first time that I combined them digitally, um, I was trying to save time. So I would just use Photoshop to figure out what went where. And then I kind of crossed over another line where I started making digital montages um, from directly from photographs. And at some point, somebody said to me, well, these things that you're spending all this time on, are you using the same sensibility that you use in your paintings, like your sense of composition and color and nuance and light? Is all of that going into these? And I had to kind of admit that it was. So this friend of mine said, so, so why is that not art? Because all along I was saying, this is just a study. Mm -hmm. And I kind of had to admit, it was. So that's when I first started exhibiting those works, um, as I have some of them here, um, kind of on equal footing with paintings. But the thing that makes me want to paint is color. It's also the thing that makes me take out my camera. Um, and I, I've always thought of myself as a painter who uses photographs. So. Um, photographing it is a way of capturing it and kind of keeping it, but painting it is a way of really touching it and owning it. Mm -hmm. And um, so I have more of an emotional connection. Mm -hmm. This painting is probably the first time that I took one of my very, very complex Photoshop compositions and painted it. Um, there's definitely a, a random element to it. When I start in Photoshop, I start with a blank canvas and I have all of the photographs from my photo shoot, and I kind of just throw them down. I think of it as being kind of like pickup sticks. Mm -hmm. Like I just throw them down, and then I start finding the relationships between them. So that's why this area of transition from one to the other is really where the work happens. Um, I would say this is, up until this point, the most successful instance of putting together one of my really densely layered Photoshop mm -hmm. compositions in, in paint. Well, I'd like you to talk about your concept of time, your, your sense of the dimension of time in your work. Because if I look at your work, and it's very, it, appeal, it, it, it leaps out at me very strongly that there's an element of time that you're transcending and that that's important to your message. Yeah, that's, I love that question. <laughs> <laughs> I really do, because um, you know, I'm starting from the fact that that the work is about, about this city. It's about what is no longer there that we know was there, mm -hmm. and living in a place like this, we, we are sure of it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the present, of course, we know about that, but in, you know, in, in, in instantly it becomes the past. Um, and, and the real void is probably the future. That's really why I've begun to use black a lot as as my as my blank canvas. Mm -hmm. You think of black as being nothing, and then all, something is coming out of it. Um, and for instance, like with this painting here, um, I I don't even know myself whether the black is the background or the foreground. Huh. And to me, that is an element of time. The way you look at the city is very often like a vertical panorama. And I would like for you to, to tell me what you mean, and if you can pull out an example from your work of the vertical panorama, what you mean by that. Well, first of all, we're living in a vertical city. Um, we usually think of a panorama as being horizontal. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're standing, you're vertical. And if you look down at your feet and you look straight up, you've got a kind of a slice of the landscape, which is a vertical panorama. 
there are a lot of different images, but there is a sense that you're heading towards the sky at the top and heading towards the ground at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And sometimes a kind of a void opens up in the middle, kind of a space opens up in the, in the center. What, what do you mean by iconic visual clues? What are the icons? Well, an icon in the sense of being a symbol, uh, being something that represents something recognizable but not representational. Um, uh, and in, in the context of construction sites, there are things we see, all things I see anyway, all the time. Every single panel of the six panels that make up the painting has some black in it. That was very deliberate. Mm -hmm. um, because to me, the, the black needs to be there. It represents the what what's not finished or what was torn away, mm -hmm. um, and the the blue and the blue and the orange bands are clearly iconic representations of blue the orange netting, yeah. um, the the blue construction uh, barriers that we see. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I mean by by pulling out things that are. Are, um, are going to make you kind of know what you're looking at mm -hmm. without it really being um, realistic. What is the significance for you of this physical presence in your work? Well, I, I mean, part of it is just that I really like to build stuff. <laughs> and it's just the way um, I naturally work. Um, so even paint is, is, a, is a substance. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's, it's uh, something that is built on something else. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of it is just really what I like to do. Mm -hmm. And because the subject matter works so well with that kind of uh, imagery, you know, um, it's, it's easy <laughs> to make it work mm -hmm. for what I want. What's the significance of so much color for you? It's interesting that Cora was just talking about um, you know, this kind of primal thing about building. For me, the primal thing is, is color. People who have an emotional response to color almost before anything else. So what I do in my paintings has to do with using color to define space. Uh -huh. um, and it's not so much a representation of realistic space. People sometimes come into my studio and they say, well, where are the people? <laughs> um, and what I feel is that you you are you are the people like I want people to imaginatively enter into the spaces that I create in my work and kind of take a trip mm -hmm. and hopefully be able to find their way out. <laughs> I think of also the the architecture of today as being kind of like the pyramids. You know, I think if we were looking at the pyramids being built. Um, comparing them to the brashness of the of the things we build today, mm -hmm. it's like I think I think we've got more nerve. It's really it's unbelievable to me. So there's a certain sort of um, uh, wonder mm -hmm. and awesomeness mm -hmm. about it that is a trigger for me mm -hmm. emotionally and, vis and visually.